Hello and welcome guys. We're going to do a question and answer and then we're going to do a painting all together in one big show. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you. Yes, my speaker, my microphone is working. I want to welcome you to this fun little question and answer I, about gouache. And people have been going, you know, they can't find a lot of information about gouache out on the internet. And I was like, yeah, that's right. I couldn't find very much either. So I have been playing with a bunch of paintings lately just with gouache. And I've been finding out that I really like it a lot. I hope that you will stick around on this quick little journey through gouache land. I've got about 10 points, maybe 11 questions that I'm going to answer. Then we're going to do a quick little painting of a cute little pine warbler, little yellow bird with some uh, cherry blossoms. Thank you for being here. Remember that I would love to have you subscribe to the channel. Make sure and turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go up. And if you can share my videos with your friends, that would be awesome. And click that like button and leave me a comment. If I forget a question or I don't answer the one that you have, if you could please leave that in the comments below, I will be reading the comments and answering questions down there also. All right, we're going to take a quick look at the chat and then we're going to be getting right into this. All right. Hey guys. Oh, excellent. People are going to be taking notes and I have Gina here. She is my moderator today and I am really, really happy. There is um, a couple of links that were already listed in the chat. You can scroll up all my links for products and for pretty much anything I suggest, like my Patreon where you can go and support my channel in a monetarily way. And you get really fun little things in return, like coloring sheets and project packs and some behind the scenes information. The other things that you'll find down there, links to my coloring book on Amazon, links to my Amazon affiliate store where I do make a small commission if you happen to purchase anything. And the Amazon, the Arteza links for all of the Arteza products for Europe and the United States. And we have a discount code for 10% off the total purchase at Arteza. So check that down below. It's all there. Woohoo! Yay! I've got people showing up and I'm so happy you're here. Remember that I am going to be trying to keep an eye on the chat, but I will probably take a break after I do my uh, quick, my, my quick, you can't even see that. <laughs> you would think that was a blank card, but it's not. See, there's stuff written on it. I have about 10 or 11 things I'm going to cover and then we'll take, I'll go through anything that you need um, re- reiterated. How about that? We'll go through those. I do need to start my recording here though, my local recording. Ah, there we go. So all the housekeeping is out of the way. You guys are here. Thank you so much. All righty. So number one, G-O-U-A-C-H-E. And people pronounce this so many different ways. So I went to the YouTube and I, excuse me. Well, yeah, it was on YouTube. I went to YouTube and I went to Wiki <laughs> and I found out the most common pronunciations for the UK. They pronounce it gouache, like G-O-O-W-A-S-H, gouache, gouache. It's like two words or two letter, two syllables. Um, if you ever pronounced goulash, like goulash, that noodley dish from uh, uh, Hungary, Hungary, it's very similar to that if you're in the UK or Europe. Here in the United States, we tend to say gouache, hard G, 
and then it's like wash as in oh wash our hands which everybody is doing because we need to keep ourselves healthy but also keep those people around us healthy and social distance you can't get much more social distance than doing a distance learning class on youtube so we are all in a really great place here so that was number one gouache we pronounce it here in the united states with a hard g Gua, like good gouache and europe and uk is gouache like two syllables and it does come from the french it does the um the pronunciation of it is um you know it's it's subject to the people who say it but there's you know people put extra syllables and do really weird things with it i don't know but okay we've gone over how to say it what is it what is gouache gouache is an opaque water media it is for the regular gouache pigment mixed with usually gum arabic hmm that sounds just like watercolor doesn't it pigment and gum arabic but then they put opacifiers into it things to make it opaque things to make it so you can put light colors on top of dark colors you don't get that when you're doing watercolor by itself watercolor by itself is much more fluid and is more transparent so you use the white of the paper to be your white now i oh that's interesting it would be wash this g is silent in french okay excellent <laughs> well stephanie did uh stephanie stubbins did i pronounce it right for the uk <laughs> i didn't pronounce it right for french but i did pronounce it right for uk maybe um so we're going to, I'm going to set this stuff to the side for a second. We'll come back to that in a second. I need just a piece of watercolor paper. Now I had a, um, one of our community before I show how to, how to lay it down on a piece of paper. This is just 140 pound watercolor paper. I have a very good person here in my community who has asked how do you use two jars of water when you're doing watercolor or gouache and it's you know if you've never done it it's really it, it's confusing so this is the leftovers from my painting that I did yesterday I wanted to show you this is the dirty jar and this is my clean jar now my clean jar is not perfectly clean there's a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of cloudiness in this little jar. This is clean water. But most of the solids and the dirty stuff went into the big jar. And that's, all of that came off of doing this one painting. This is about five and a half by seven inches. And I did this one with acrylic gouache. So that's, um, there, it seems to be that there's a little bit more solids in an acrylic and acrylic gouache. So your water does get dirtier, but I am going to set this one aside now because we don't really need the dirty, dirty water. Find a spot to set it so I'm not going to knock it down. There we go. Way far away from me. And now I have a new clean jar and this little, this little jar that I am still going to use as my clean water. This one, because there's more volume, it can hold more of the solids. And we are going to play with gouache. Not with the white though, because it's kind of hard to see. So I'm grabbing the sap green gouache and, oh, Another tip, save these, you know, if you, well, don't, another tip, don't put your thumb in your fresh paint. I have another palette over here that has fresh paint on it. All right. Clean water. I'm going to wash the paint off my hand. Okay. 
Yeah, dirty water jar, clean water jar. Makes a difference in keeping your colors nice and clean at the end of a painting. <laughs> yeah, Amy. <laughs> Thank you. I am, you know, roll up my sleeves. So, clean the paint off the outside. Things to use for palettes. Anything that's got a, that's hard works really well as a palette. Now for regular gouache, you could just use a piece of watercolor paper, squeeze your gouache on it, let it dry, and then you can pick it up off the paper um, later if it, but it's harder to mix colors on paper. So save, this is an old yogurt container lid. Many people will take uh, small plastic lids and do color families on lids. And so they'll, and then they can just stack up the lids after the paint is dry. They can just have a whole stack of color families. I haven't been doing it long enough to have a color family set up, set up yet. You can use these little well palettes. This is nice when you're only using small amounts of paint. Uh, and if it dries, you can still reconstitute it with regular gouache. You notice I'm saying regular gouache and not all gouache. Regular gouache. Because you have two different kinds of gouache. You've got, whoops, <laughs> you have acrylic gouache, which is basically acrylic polymers with the pigments and opacifiers. That makes it matte but it also makes it plastic. So you can put acrylic gouache on any surface. You can use acrylic gouache on fabric and metal and glass and plastic and paper and cardboard, wood, any surface. Regular gouache being a water-based medium that re-wets, reconstitutes, you can go, come back to it months and months later, get it wet and rework a little section if you didn't like the expression on somebody's face or the tilt of a flower, you could go and do that. So regular gouache, re-wets. It was made with the pigments, gum arabic, and the opacifiers, the things that make it opaque. That also, the opacifiers are what make it matte also and give it that sort of velvety texture. So before we start that other stuff here, show you a quick, this one is the acrylic gouache. And as this dries, this is completely dry. This could get wet and I could rub my hand over it and nothing's going to happen to it. This is another one. This was done with the Arteza gouache and it's much more of a watercolor look. I was going for that, where I have much heavier application on the flowers, and you know, let me drop it down so it's, so you guys can see it better. Uh, heavier application of the gouache on the flowers and on the hummingbird moth, but then a lighter cover on the background. Yes, this will be available to watch back later. So, and, I'm not, I know that my uh, super chat is turned, I believe my super chat is turned on. If my super chat is turned on, if you have a burning question that you really, really want me to see, just, you know, do a, a tiny little amount so that it will pop up to the top and it will stay at the top of my chat because I'm focusing on what I'm talking about here. That way I can go back and see. <laughs> all of the burning questions. But yes, this will be available. And if you put all of your questions in caps, yes, what's the difference between acrylic gouache and acrylic paint? I'll go over that in just a minute. Thank you, Amy. Great question. But right here, this is a comparison. Acrylic gouache and regular gouache. Okay, so very, very strong difference. I hope you guys like those. 
Tell me which one you want as an upcoming lesson. I've recorded them both. <laughs> then. The other thing that I wanted you to see is that gouache, all of the colors, go over dark without adding anything. Look at this. These bright colors are right on top of this dark background. And this is the Arteza gouache. This is not the acrylic gouache. So look at that. This is another with the Arteza gouache. Fun, Mr. Bumble. And this is a green. This was a green background. You can kind of see the green in here back behind those flowers. So, and this is matte board with the Arteza gouache. So there you go. Um, well here, let's, well, this one was on a dark background and this is on a white background, but looking that at that, it all depends on how thickly you lay the paint on because I laid the paint on pretty darn thin here. I did mostly like a watercolor wash for the background and then did heavier applications for the flowers and the moth. And they're different colorways too, so that can make that. But this one, like I said, this, and the, the wood duck here and the bumblebee have been recorded also, so I know some people are going to say, give them all, give them all. These things are like an hour to an hour and a half long. Some, one of them I think is almost two hours long. So, you know, I don't, people don't tend to watch the really, really long videos. Getting back, we're going to put here. I will put the sap green regular gouache and I have a permanent green of the acrylic gouache. I was going to use the light green, but it's, it's almost neon. This permanent green is PB15 and PY yellow, P, PY3, PY yellow, <laughs> PY3. And the Arteza gouache is PG7 and PY1. So pigment green seven for the sap green with uh, pigment yellow one and the Turner acryl gouache is the PB 15, which is like a phthalo blue and the yellow. So we are going to zoom in on this. Let's see little, there's going to be a little movie moving, moving here. Get that up so you can see it better. All right. <laughs> oh, wow, that's wonderful. Your daughter is a bee expert. I have a niece who has beehives. She's learning to be an expert. <laughs> so this is, like I said, this is just a piece of Arteza um, double-sided, 140-pound acid-free but not cotton paper. This is a pulp paper. It has a light texture on one side here. Oh, let's see here. Slide that up close. See if we can do this. All right. Get your brush wet in the clean water. Both of them are clean right now, but you know. I'm going to take some of the standard gouache and I am going to put some down here. Now, this is a watercolor brush. I can use this with the standard gouache, but it's pretty soft. If you look at this, it's it's kind of a struggle to move the paint around. So I'm going to wash my brush out in the dirty water jar, rinse it in the clean water jar, and then I'm going to set this one aside. I really like using this for when I get into the details, but I need a brush that I can do both the acrylic and the, and the standard gouache with. So this is just a flat half inch flat brush. 
I definitely suggest using synthetic bristle brush brush <laughs> synthetic bristle brushes with your gouache versus the regular. So now that's a fairly thin application. You can layer over a little bit while it's wet, but then come back and We've got a bit of a glare. So that's the Arteza gouache. Oh, she's going to gouache her brush. You betcha. Rinse it out and grab some of the acrylic gouache. Now, if you look here, you can see the acrylic gouache stands up and doesn't, um, it does not flatten out as much. You can end up with um, thicker areas, more brushed, brushed up areas. It covers really fast. It's very, very slippery, very smooth. And even though you're not supposed to use heat on your watercolors or on, on any paint really because it will color shift. I am going to for quickness sake so that we can move on hit this with a little bit of there we go a little bit of air get it to dry so then you can see how not shiny it is. So look at that, not shiny, matte. And even though it's just surface dried, I can take a bit of water and I can reconstitute. And look how, wow. Look at that. Now, we're going to make sure there's no paint on it. I'm going to go over and see if we can do that on this side. Okay, look at that. If I scrub on it really, really hard, I can get a tiny little stain. But just dropping water on it isn't going to change it. Now I'm going to just, I'm going straight down and blotting and there's no color. If I go straight down and blotting, <laughs> you can lift. Look at that. We are lifting that. Let's see, let's see how, how much we can lift. We're gonna do a stripe right down the middle all wet and remember these whoa almost put it in my clean paint clean water use my paper towel and that's how much you can lift out there's a certain amount of staining that happens on the paper but not much now I'm going to go ahead dry that off just a little bit grab my gouache again my Arteza gouache again and let's see that's two layers of Arteza gouache on that and just that one layer here gets darker but now which is which <laughs> the green this side is the acrylic gouache this is the Turner acrylic gouache Acryl gouache. I bought it in a set of 18 from Jerry's Artorama. I have not got that link down below yet, but I'll put the link down. I do not get any um, kickbacks from Jerry's. They're not sponsoring or anything like that. I just, that's where I bought it. And it was on a pretty good sale. It was an 18 pack and I think it was $24, $25. I could be wrong. It might've been 26, but it's a good price. 
and the other gouache is the Arteza gouache, and I did get this from Arteza several months ago, but, uh, you know, now it's not a sponsored or anything. It's just because that's what I've got. Let's see. Rinse, 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 rinse. Dabbing it off and making sure my brush is clean. That way, when you go and pick up your next color, you're not transferring this into this into that, unless you wanted to. <laughs> Let's see. Any questions? No? We're doing good. Excellent. All right. Since we have these down, and that's... The darkest one there isn't dry yet, but let's see here. We're going to grab the acrylic gouache white. That's black. <laughs> Where's the white? There's the white. All right. I'm just going to put a little bit of this out on my, just directly on, whoops, I did that off. Putting some of this paint directly on my brush. My brush was clean. I'm not putting any dirty paint into my tube this way. And now I'm going to make a stripe of white right through the middle. This is the acrylic gouache. And look at that coverage. Yes, you can see a slight shadow through it. And if you drag your brush the wrong way, you can just drag it right, right off. There we go. And right now, let's see if we can see if we can get a I'm not sh I got to push these back just a smidge. I'm trying to see if I can find a glare. White is hard to show the glare. <laughs> there we go. Rinse the brush out. And Acrylic gouache especially gets into the bristles of your brush. So you want to make sure that you rinse your brush really, really well. And that's another reason for blotting it off on a towel. You can use a cloth towel, paper towels work, and then giving it a swish in that clean water. You can make sure you're not transferring any colors. Now I'm going to, I do have some white, um, Arteza gouache sitting here. So I'm going to just grab some of that. And we're just going to go up, 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 up. Just like this. The, if you work over it on the regular gouache, if you work back and forth, you will lift color through. So you need to work your subsequent layers light-handed. Trying to trying to come down come up with that word. What was it that I wanted to say? I want it to be light-handed. And the other thing you can do is add just a touch of water to it if you want to have that softer blending. So say I wanted that green to to be blended. So there. Which do I prefer? <laughs> Which do I prefer? I've only done one painting with the acrylic gouache so far. And um, I was finding it frustrating having been doing the regular gouache for several paintings. Um, let's see. It's beautiful. It's definitely more like an acrylic painting. Another tip, any acrylic painting that's out there, you can do it with gouache. You can layer, you can just, mm, they're beautiful. And if you use acrylic gouache, you're using acrylic. So it's definitely straight across. Now, somebody wanted to know what's the difference between acrylic paint. So this is the crimson red acrylic and Let's see here. I have a, I have a card. Where did my card go? 
Aha! I prepared for this project here. We have the Arteza watercolor in carmine, excuse me, in um, crimson. We have the Arteza gouache in crimson. We have the Turner acrylic gouache right here in carmine. And we have the Arteza acrylic paint in crimson. <laughs> so the crimson colors are a little bit different. The watercolor and the gouache are pretty much the same color. The Arteza acrylic um, crimson tends to be a bit bluer. The acrylic gouache and the Arteza acrylic, truthfully, there's not much difference between them because Arteza acrylic tends to be a little bit more to the matte side of acrylic paints, but it's the sheen. Really and truly, it's the sheen. So you get this velvety look with the acrylic gouache, and you get just a flat matte look, but not velvety, with the acrylic paint. Let's see. Does that... Does, does that answer that question? While, we're, while I'm waiting for that answer to that question, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Let's see. I'm going, okay, what things have I covered now? How to pronounce, what is it? What does it look like? Show coverage comparison chart. Now I'm going to show you a swatch chart here in just a minute where I show um, white being put on top of all of the different colors. Uh, lights dry darker and darks dry lighter. So when you're putting your painting together, the light colors will dry to the darker side of things and the light colors will, the dark colors will dry to the lighter side of things. Dark to the light, light to the dark. <laughs> Does the paint flake off the palette after it dries? Um, I would dispense the minimum amount unless you have a sealed compartmentalized palette. I have seen some where uh, it's like individual cups with snap-on lids for the palettes. But when I'm working on something, I might use... You know, these colors, this amount might be two or three paintings, but I just leave it setting on my desk. Uh, I also want to do a public safety announcement. Our, the, the gouache paints are, AS, the, most gouache paints are ASTMD safe colors. On the Turner acrylic gouache in the only one that had a specific warning was the black jet black there it is and it actually has a may be harmful if swallowed and exposure may cause anemia it has soluble copper in it so wash your hands wash your hands stay safe don't eat paint second public service announcement many people out on the internet will say suggest just go find a frame at the thrift store and use the glass in that as your palette. That will shatter eventually. And it will shatter into needle-like thin pieces of crystalline glass that will cut you. So you can find picture frames that have plexiglass and use the just reuse the plastic out of the plexiglass uh, frame. They call it glazing. Or something I found that I really, really like is this is a glass cutting board. It is tempered glass. If it ever broke, it would break like automobile glass. It would break into um, like square chunks. This one happens to have little, um, little silicone feet on the back of it. And it's made 
for chopping things. You know, it's made for chopping with your knife. Well, yes, I'm not, yeah, no, don't drink your paint water. Paint water is in a totally different container than my, than my coffee cup. <laughs> but the chopping boards are made for cutting on and chopping on top of. So they're made to take impact. Well, we're not exactly impacting it really hard with our paint brushes. So just be careful. But um, the glass cutting board is a really good option. I have a link down below for a four pack from Amazon. It's like $20 for four cutting boards. So I gave one to my husband to use as a palette and he uses it for acrylic paint and we just use a razor scraper. And once the paint is all dry, because he uses his palette a lot because he daily paints, all I do is take a razor scraper and just scrape it off and it's good as new, ready to go. And a razor scraper isn't going to hurt glass. A razor scraper will not work on plastic. You can just keep layering up your paint on one of these little things if you don't wash it off. The uh, the regular gouache here reconstitutes. This was dry. See, look at that. Now, you will have a thinner application of the paint if you're going from reconstituted paint versus fresh. Fresh paint covers thicker. Uh, we all like rainbows. <laughs> all right. Uh, how to pronounce? What is coverage? Light, dry, dark, dark, dry, light. The substrates. Uh, regular gouache goes on paper and wood, but it, and any, um, hard, harder firm surface. If you paint really thick on a flexible surface, it will crack and flake off. Acrylic gouache, you can paint on all surfaces, especially the Turner. They even say in their literature, you can paint on cloth and metal and glass and wood and paper. You get them all. Oh, and rocks. They even, they're very proud that the acrylic gouache works on rocks. And you don't even have to seal it when you use the acrylic gouache on the rocks. If you want to seal a, um, a gouache painting, really the, the official answer is don't varnish it. Uh, it will tend to change the color some. And if you end up using a gloss or a semi-gloss, you're going to change the sheen and the effect of the gouache. And so if you want to preserve a gouache painting that is regular gouache, you would put that in a mat and a frame so that the glass doesn't come in contact with the actual painting, exactly the way you would do a watercolor painting. Now, I have heard that you can use the Krylon UV um, sealer. It's not supposed to change the sheen or the texture of your um, painting. And I have not tried that yet. So I'll, that's just hearsay, but it's something to think about. Uh, some people also say you can just use the Krylon UV protecting varnish in matte and it shouldn't change it that much. Very light coats, very light sprays, always do it outside. <laughs> color shift, yeah. You end up with color shift on uh, on things sometimes and you'll you'll see that when you put well, let's see here see this is the watercolor the arteza gouache the acrylic gouache and the acrylic paint and if i go across here this is the watercolor, totally reconstituting. I can pick it up from here and I can go paint again. Okay, that's the Arteza watercolor. This is the Arteza gouache. This was done last night, so let's see how we do here. Scrubby, scrubby, scrub. Oh, look at that. 
if you wanted to go and do a quick little painting someplace, look at that. All of that just came off that little pad of dry paint. Now the acrylic gouache. Let's let's look. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit. I don't know if that's true. Let's wipe that off and see if that's true because I can't remember if I washed my brush out. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now my brush is just damp. So I'm really scrubbing around on that and ooh, we, we got a tiny bit of transfer. You're not painting anything with that though. And then the acrylic paint. Scrubby, scrubby, scrub. And nothing. I hope that helped see the difference here of the levels of reconstituting and how these just don't reconstitute. All right. Um, color swatch. So I did do... I did color swatch and what I did is I put down the paint. I put down the paint over the permanent marker. So you can see how the white is really, really opaque. The crimson is kind of opaque. The orange is kind of opaque. The yellow is actually much more opaque. The green is semi-opaque. The ultramarine blue is, oh my gosh, it will cover up all the mistakes. The violet and the black are both very opaque. So what I did is I went and added 50-50 uh, white and red. And that's the color I got. The orange and white. The yellow and white the green and white, ultramarine blue and white, that just is the prettiest sky. The purple, so this violet is really, it's a PV23. I don't know what violet that is, but, and oh, oh it's PV23 PW6. I don't see any white in this, but when you mix it 50-50 with the white, you get this beautiful violet color, really reminds me of a diosmine type purple and then the black, and you get a really nice solid gray. I'm just quick taking a check, checky check. All right. So this was the regular Arteza gouache. This is the Turner acrylic gouache. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, I have to read. What one was this? So this is the acrylic gouache. The acrylic gouache is a little bit more sheer. It's not quite as opaque on that white. You can see the black line through there. And the same with the carmine. And now you are not seeing, let's see if I can hold it at the right angle. There is a little shadow of color from the black pen coming through on the permanent orange, the permanent lemon. The permanent green is not, it's not too bad. The cobalt blue, because I didn't have an ultramarine, is um, is opaque, the violet is opaque, and the black is opaque. So the difference in the violet and the violet. Now the violet on the um, Turner is PV23, only PV23. The violet on the Arteza regular gouache is PW6 in PV23. So they're saying there's white in this, but the pigment um, mixture is really different. So just because it's PV23, you'd think that one had the white in it, but it doesn't. All right. And you can see, you know, when you put the white in it, that cobalt actually looks very similar to the ultramarine. And that's because the cobalt is ultramarine with white. 
So that's why when they're mixed with white, these two actually look very similar. The uh, sap green, green and the permanent green light actually look very similar when they're mixed with yellow, uh, mixed with white. And they are both PG7. And um, the permanent green light has PY3 and sap green here has PY1. I don't know what the pigment yellow one and three differences are. I'm giving you the pigment things because they're there. <laughs> but otherwise, I think we're ready to start playing and do a painting. What Are you guys ready for a painting? Do we have any questions that um, I haven't answered? Because I think I've gone through all the things. Have I gone through all the things? I'm going to have to zoom out just a little bit so that you guys will be able to see the painting and the palette. I have pre-sketched this little pine warbler onto a piece of that 140 pound watercolor paper from Arteza. It is double-sided. I am using the textured side. I just sketched it with a mechanical pencil and I want my eraser because even though, <laughs> let's paint. Yes, even though I have, um, you know, drawn lightly, I'm going to have to just take a little bit of that off of the bird. I don't want it to be quite so dark. I do have a traceable for this bird up on my website in the traceables and patterns page or patterns and traceables page. So see, it's still there. I can still see it, but I do need to bring my reference up. So let's see if I can find my reference. Aha, found the reference, pull that off, bring it over here. Not so big on that. And what I need to do, if you guys will uh, bear with me for a moment, I am going to see if I have one of these, aha. Um, properties, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to bring up a, um, an image for you so that you guys will be able to see it. Pine warbler, open, yes, okay. And now turn that little guy on. So I don't have enough room to, maybe I can put him up that way because I basically drew it up about like that. I don't have enough room here to have me up this big. We're going to take me down. Take me down. And back to here and whoops, wrong one. Here and <laughs> oh Silly me. There it is. Live stream. There we go. I had to get back to get all the bits and pieces back since we're going to start doing this painting. I want to make sure that we get everybody going. All right. So yeah, isn't he sweet? So I'm looking at it and going, okay, we've got a gray background. I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's see. Eh, it's just not, not quite, not quite going to, going to work for us. And I am actually going to use this brush and I'm not worried that my big jar is that dirty green, though you're not going to see it while we're doing the painting because I have to, well, maybe if I take that out of the way, I can bring it forward just a little bit. 
Okay. We, we okay here? Let's see. Maybe? Ooh, look at that. The only problem is that big, that big jar is... No, I have to push them back out of the way. It's, sh it's shadowing over the palette. There we go. All right, so I am taking my brush and I am actually going to get the background wet with this big number 12 Mimic Squirrel from Jerry's. I actually got it on Amazon though because keep a lookout on those sales because sometimes the small pack will cost less or the big pack will cost less on Amazon than it does on Jerry's. So just, I'm not going to get the bird wet just so that by putting in the background, you'll be able to see the little guy better. This is a gray grayed out with some pink blurry spots. So, um, Yes, in when you're on your phone, you do have to exit out of the chat to be able to click on the like and the subscribe and then just pop right back into the chat. <laughs> I want to make sure that my paper is wet, just like doing a watercolor. The paint will go where the water is, but the paint will also go where you set your brush. I'm going to go ahead and grab a bit of that ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit more. Kind of squeeze it out and then I'm going to rinse. And make sure that's clean. Now my paints will not stay pristine. I will forget and I will just start mixing colors and things like that. So, you know, don't, don't be too worried. I'm going to gray out my blue here and I've got a little touch of that. See, already did it. Little touch of that orange. That orange into that um, ultramarine blue and I'm going to go ahead and just grab a little bit of white and look at that let's see maybe leave a couple spots where I know there's going to be pink flowers But see how that just sort of whooshes across the page? And this is, you know, a very first layer. I'm just going to go across this leg, across the branch. Just trying to keep the little bird kind of clean. Bring the paint up into the bird a little bit, though. That way he is over the top of the background. So now I'm going to go in and sort of blot out a couple spots where I want flowers to go in, the pink background type stuff. There we go. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I like this pretty little bird. Let's see, down here is a lot darker. So I'm going to go ahead. Again, I am definitely not one that keeps my, my colors perfect. I'm sorry if that gives anybody stress. It's just the way I work. <laughs> Color mixing on the palette, yeah, I, I I tend to mix on the palette, get some of that darker, it needs to be a little bit more green maybe, 
Okay. My brush is really, really dirty. Let's go into the... Grab a little bit of green. Kind of green up that gray a little bit. Oh, there we go. Start dabbing in a little bit of that. You know, there's, we're looking through, there's a whole bunch of trees and bushes and such. The person who took this picture was able to blur it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a clean artist. I'm just sort of softening up. I don't want it to look like that, like I did the bird as a outline though. So I want to get these sort of randomized a little bit and get a little bit of water back onto the page. Soften up that spot. I'm going to go in and get some of those pinky areas put in and then we can get the the branch because the branch is in front of that darker area down below. color on the brush. I'm just working it around. Nice thing about it is on the paper like this, the looks a little messy, doesn't it? It'll come together. It'll come together. So I'm going to take not getting any green in my red, a little bit of that red, and I'm going to rotate the palette just a bit. And I'm just going to use one of the other, one of the other wells here and mix up a pink. Right now, this is about a 50, 50. Doesn't look that messy to you. Oh, excellent. And Okay, I'm going to just, the reason why my, my clean gets a little bit dirty is because I will dip every once in a while to get my brush. Now it's going to look messy. Getting this in, then I'm going to really clean the brush. And if you notice, I'm like wiping off down the whole thing because I am dipping really deep. Because I want to soften that into the background some. I will grab a, a little bit of the white and drop it on here. What this is doing, it's pinking up that background a little bit. covering up all the white. It's giving us the deeper tones. Yes, being able to lift off is amazing. Okay, so we're getting some of that background in there. Some of this actually needs to just go more to the gray. Just let it, let it sort of work its way off a bit. Now there's a little bit of a branch coming through. I think I'm going to put the flowers in front of the branch. So I'm going to work that branch back in right now. So it just is blurred out. And I'm taking the, that green gray color that we made I'm not worrying about it being brown so much, but I do need it to be darker. You guys are along on my playtime here. <laughs> ah, Jan, I'm so glad you're back. We just got started, you know. Okay, so I'm going to sort of draw across and off the page. This is the bottom of that branch. And maybe draw across 
and just kind of off the page. Not too worried. Just, just actually bringing some, some branches in, but not too worried about what they look like right now because this is like the shadowy underside of those branches. Okay. And I might as well put in that branch that he's standing on, our cute little pine warbler. At least that's what the person on Unsplash says it is. And now it goes a little bit darker on the bottom. I'm grabbing some purple. That violet, go in, give you a, a little bit more lively color, but it's still kind of gray. I'm going to go ahead and take some of that in on these branches. And I am working in more of a watercolor way with this one, at least right now. I think when I get to the, get to the actual little bird, he's going to be done in a much more gouache style. So he'll be more opaque and have a much more presence. Everything else is just sort of the supporting characters behind him, except for a couple of the flowers that are going to get popped in. They're still supporting characters, but they're not going to be as prominent. Now I'm going to take some of that white and just add it into that gray color. We don't want it to look like snow. You do want it to have a color tone to it. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> yeah, um, the that soft focus background, which is part of the depth of field on a camera, and what it does is when you have focus on something that is close to you, very sharp. Everything else in the background just sort of goes soft and fuzzy. And that is a shallow depth of field. The actual bokeh effect, most people think of it when they're looking at lights and how lights will go um, into those soft dots, uh, very round little dots of light. And my video that I have coming up on Monday, which is the which is around here somewhere. Okay, it's it's not this one, but it's the big one. It's the big tiger lily. But for some reason I had it. I showed it earlier. Time for a new piece of paper. <laughs> this one, I end up, I don't know, I end up gripping things. So that paper towel is starting to turn my hand green. So it's time for a fresh one. Get a little dab of water. Make sure my gray is wet. <laughs> All right. So now I'm taking some of that grayed out color and just adding it to the tops of my little branches just to give them a little bit more substance. But again, they aren't the, they aren't the stars. Make this neat thing here. You can go in and you can pick up the color from that's gone down before. I want a little bit of that orange in here, I think. 
start bringing this more to the foreground. And a little touch of blue. I'm sort of mixing it right on the paper also, because you can do that. You can mix right on the paper too with gouache. So cool. And give that a little bit of a bumpy edge. A little bit of, a little bit more blue and orange. I haven't done this painting that, I mean, I found it right before going live today and was like, Ooh, I can do that. And so I quickly drew it up and made the traceable and put it on my website <laughs> instead of doing a sample. All right. Something that you can do with that uh, violet and that orange is it actually makes a really, oops, it makes a burnt sienna brown. Look at that. That's magic to me. The, this is the orange Arteza, which is pigment orange 13 with that uh, violet, which is PW6 and PV23. And it makes this gorgeous, gorgeous brown. So, and yeah, I know that the branch is not brown in this picture. It's more green, but I need to get some shadow in here and I am taking liberties. And you can do that too. You can take liberties. You don't have to, to do the exact, yeah, just what am I doing? I don't have to save the area where his feet are. I can go right over it. Get more of a green, gray going on there. There we go. Rough it up just a little bit. Looks more rough to me than it does to you. Just taking, now I'm working wet onto wet here. If you let this dry, that white would stand right out. But because I'm doing the wet onto wet, I'm getting this lovely little blend and texture. Just like that. All right. Oh, guys, you know, I'm really appreciative of all of you sticking around and watching this with me. Remember to click that subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already so that you'll be able to get notified when I do more painting videos. And I have a premiere going up at 9.15 a.m. on Monday that hasn't been scheduled yet, but it's all set up to be scheduled. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get that white going with a little bit. Now I'm going to go over and grab a touch of the clean water when I grab that white and I'm going to put it over here in a separate, separate little palette. And I'm then going to go grab some of that pink that I mixed up. I want it to be a soft, soft pink. So we're going to go in and just give us some soft little flowers. These are going to dry and be on top. Look at that. Just, just your little soft blurred out cherry blossoms. Leave a little bit of the dark color showing up. I'm going to put probably one little hero flower on that side. There we go. So these can go over the branch, around the branch, under the branch. 
just sort of petal like shapes. See, you don't, don't get too fussy with it. And you guys know that when I'm saying that, I'm saying it for my own for my own benefit because I am notorious for getting fussy with my paintings. A little bit of clean white. So we're getting little five petal and then just some random petals here and there over the top of that darker color that we put in the background. Fun, huh? Yeah, thank you. I, I really, I'm liking this a lot. Now we're gonna get just, ooh, that's a lot. We're gonna be much more considered where we're putting this darker color. <laughs> ah. Just. There we go. All right. So now looking at that, going just a little bit of color coming out from where the center of the flowers are. And then I might blend this just a bit. just so that we have some variety going on. Maybe a couple darker centers, not too much. Probably get some, some orange in here too. All right. I'm teaching everyone things that make me happy. <laughs> So I am so happy to hear that the things that I enjoy are making other people happy too, because, you know, painting flowers, flowers are there for the enjoyment of everyone. You don't have any, you know, there's no limitations on a person being able to enjoy a flower unless, because even a blind person can enjoy a flower. They enjoy the flower by touch. So, unless somebody's just a grumpy old curmudgeon, you know, who wouldn't enjoy anything anyway. <laughs> Let's see. That's just a little bit there. See? Do do do. Ah, this is not a neon pink. This is made with crimson red and white. So the palette itself is crimson red, orange, lemon yellow, sap green, ultramarine blue, violet, and black and white. Very simple, simple palette. All right. I'm going to soften that up just a bit. Didn't want it quite so bright. Now we're going to take a little bit of that orange. Just, just tiniest little bit. And a little bit of the yellow. Tiny little bit. I like that kind of orangey yellow. And then we're going to go and just, just kiss the centers of a few of those little flowers. We've got those. Now, I am looking right here, and that looks a little bit, a little bit odd. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another stick there. Cause the space just looked weird. Space looks weird, go do something with it. See? 
That's what we do. That's a broken stick. Make things up, guys. It's your world. Just like old Bob said, do the things in your world that make you happy. Nobody else has to live there. There. See? That's a little too light right there. Let's see. Nope, needs a little bit more. See? That's all it takes. Put a little bit in there. Put a little bit in. See how it looks. Go, you know what? Maybe a little bit of a highlight in a couple spots. This branch that he's standing on is pretty much dry now. I could put in Where's Waldo from Where's Waldo. I could. <laughs> I'm not gonna, but I could. So the base coat of this little guy actually is going to be kind of a greenish color, I think. Looking at that. Let's see, let's make it, let's look at that reference picture. Let's make it bigger. So looking at this little guy, I see kind of a drab olive green as the base. with highlights of a brighter yellow with maybe even a little touch of um, some orange in it. He has kind of a drab olive in his wing and then some of that darker um, dark blue with the orange with a little bit of purple make it a dark dark almost burnt umber type of color and then a lighter version of that drab green. So that's how I break down what the colors are here. And his feet and legs here can even be that. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of mix up some of that drab green color. I'm going to take some of the sap green down here with all that, that stuff that we were using before. I'm just incorporating it slip over for just a second. Incorporating that, I want to pick up some of that. Yep, I want a little bit of orange in this green. See how that starts taking it down? It's not as bright, but it's still too, um, too saturated. So what do we need? We need maybe a touch of red. Not that much. The red really is very strong. A touch of crimson into that green and look at that now we're getting more drab that red is the opposite of the green so it does desaturate it meaning that it makes it a duller version of its original self because if you look at that next to that you'd never know those two colors came from each other and that's the reason why the orange does a little bit to it. The orange has red in it. So, you know, a little bit of orange into your green will sometimes tone it down enough, but it wasn't quite enough for me. All right. So I'm going to give a light coat of this green. Boom, boom, boom. All over the bird. And pick up that water that I splashed. And you're going, but it's a yellow bird. But we're, we're giving him his shadow tones, that color that's underneath. 
so that when we put the yellow on top, it will stand out. It'll have something to be contrasted with. So look at that. I didn't do too bad on my silhouette. That's, that's not too bad. So I did freehand him in looking at that picture right there. And then I uh, took a picture of it, of the freehanded one, traced it off in black and made it into a traceable for you guys. So if you're interested in it, make sure that you uh, click on the link down below and go to the patterns page on my website. And all you have to do is do a right click and save. I'm not making it hard for anybody. All right. So now what I need to do, I guess I can just let that dry for a minute. I'm going to just take a smaller brush, even though I could still do it with the big with the big brush because it comes down to such a tiny little tip. I'm grabbing a uh, number two round by Ruby. It's a Ruby Satin by Silver Company, number two round. I am going to make a little bit of a darker gray color again. So we're going to take some of that blue and that green with a touch of orange, a little more blue, and then some white. And then a little more blue. I'm going to go ahead and put his little legs in. So we've got leg coming down. There's a bit of a wrist. So there's like a triangle at the top of his little leg. Just a touch of water. There we go. Tiny touches of water make the paint flow. So then he has a little toe that's going to the back and he has three toes coming forward. I am not making these anatomically correct. Bit of that leg right there that's sort of pushed up underneath. And so he has a toe here. Middle toe is longer. And now right now these are green. So I can take a bit of this blue, go in and shadow along one side on each. It's still green, but it's giving us tones. I can take a little bit of orange and on top of it. But if you look at the picture, it's very gray and a tiny bit of maybe a little pinkish tone to it, but it's on top of Let's see, the other one that way. You know, and they don't have to be perfect. Ah, uh, no, not abstract art. He, that, that green is the undertone. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of black. And that's just, that's, well, that'll be okay. It's very striking right now. Wow, that's really striking. You know, sometimes you, you put things in and you go, hmm. But what's so cool is that after you put it in, you can go back and soften that pigment out. You're not, see it becomes, I can pull that out and have it become part of the shadow. 
I can use it to shape those toes. I can let it blend with a little bit of the color that's underneath. I can say I really don't worry, I'm really not going to worry too much about those feet and just say, you know what, it's okay. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit of a lighter tone on the top. Here and there. Just, just lightly, lightly kind of dry brushing the, that white that's on my brush. You probably can't even see that but just a little bit. All right, I'm going to pull out the, the dryer and we're going to dry his. Dry his little body. I'm using, I am using a heat tool. You shouldn't use heat tools, but we need to get this done quick. So I'm keeping it moving and it's, warm enough that it's going to dry the paper but it's not so warm that it's like going to burn me um, as long as I keep it moving. Ah, so the way I figured out the undertone. Hey Amy. Yeah, you take care. I, I see that you're going. You make, whoops. <laughs> So the way I figured out the undertone for me is that I put that right there next to my bird and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that reference has green shadows to me. Doesn't have black shadows. He has green shadows to me. So I looked at it and went, well, he's kind of an olivey drab type of green in there. My green's a little bit brighter, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. So I went, okay, let's go with the green. Now, let's see. It's mostly dry. Mostly. We're going to go in and start putting some of the yellow in. I'm going to go back to my bigger brush. And that yellow, let's see. I don't know. He's, he's not, I mean, he's not a perfect yellow. So if I brush this in, Let's go like this. It's actually going to start picking up some of that green that's underneath, which is good. That's good. That's good. I'm going to leave where I see the giant shadows. And this is a thin application of the paint. Just touch, make it a little more wet. This paint is fresh from the tube. And I like the gouache fresh from the tube better. Let's just get that sort of yellow going. Just mush it out there. Remember, we can move the color around afterwards. So that's his shoulder right up there. So we're already starting. We're starting to get layers. You can let that dark color come out from underneath a bit. Now, right now I'm still using it in thinner ish layers. And I will always be using thinner-ish layers, but I will start letting it dry between the layers. And when you let it dry between the layers is when you start getting more of that opaque color quality. So here, let's pick it up. See, now we're getting more of that undertone color in here. There's going to be a lot more drying. But 
I'm also going to go and grab a little bit of that kind of gray tone that I had made for his made for his feet. I want to start getting that darker up here and darker on his shoulder. And then there's like a space where it ends up, it will go a little bit light and then it comes down and then there's a space and it goes light and then it comes down into those feathers. Doesn't take a lot to do the depth on here. I'm going to go ahead and take that darker, maybe add a little bit of black to it. I don't want it to be totally black, so I'm mixing it with that green tone. Sorry, I'm I'm mixing it with that green tone that I had mixed up earlier. And we're going to go just with that tippy tip of the brush, the bottom of his beak. We're leaving a thin line just so that I have a reference to come back to. And then we're going to put his little nose area where his nose is going to go. We're going to go ahead and drop in the color where his eye is. Because that, that really helps with keeping things balanced. I'm going to come do a little more detail around there, but that's just, you know, little tiny bits. You don't have to do a lot. Now, right here, I'm going to go ahead and get that detail in on his, on his wing. the darker bits. There's a bit of a dark right there. And ever so lightly, a little bit farther in. You know, it's not going to be a, it's, it's not going to be a photograph. This is our representation of this cute little guy. So I'm going to start taking that yellow and dabbing it in now over the top of that those drier areas. I may have to switch to this. I think I'm going to have to switch to my smaller brush. I'm going to scrape as much paint off as I can. There. Go to the smaller brush. So, and I'm actually going to add a little bit of white to it. And this is where you differ from the, uh, from your regular watercolors, especially. There we go. Just work that down the bristles. So any brushes you have that are good for acrylic will work for gouache and your firmer watercolor brushes. Let's see. So I'm looking here and going, he's got some bright, bright feathery bits here. He's got bright around his eye. I need to for me, I need to get some of this brightness put back in so that I can see a little bit more. Now he's still looking really green to me. I hope you guys don't mind that this is a bit long. Let's see. Some more yellow. Right 
up underneath that beak. And I need to put some more yellow out. There's gonna be a lot of yellow on this because I will be layering it up. Might even be a little touch, that might be it. There's a little touch of orange. Not a lot, just a little. I'm just working off one edge of that Ah, there we go. And his beak will get another layer. There we go. Okay. Whew. That's making me feel better. Hello to everybody who's coming in. I appreciate you being here. And I appreciate all of my steadfast crew that's been here since the very beginning. Thank you. If you have a question, please put it in all caps so that I will see it. I did go over uh, the first half an hour of this video was uh, answering questions about gouache. So please check the replay if you're new here. Whoop. If you're new here, make sure that, yeah, see how we're starting to get that color to come in. I have all of my links down below in the more information box for all the materials that I'm using and for all of the different locations in which you can support my channel. Let's see. So he's got some fluffy bits. I'm just gonna let that fluff out just a little bit off the edge. This is making me so happy. And remember that if you work these colors a lot over each other, they are going to blend back, which is a benefit and a detriment depending on your technique. So say right now I'm going, hmm, I'm getting some color here. I'm not really happy. I can just go get a little bit of extra water and move some of those colors around that are already there. That color that I put underneath, some of it's going to work its way back up if I rub hard. I don't want to do too much, but you see how that just lifted? That's because of the layers not being completely dry on top. It will easily lift, but if you let your layers dry, you will end up with um, them bonding to each other more. So I'm going to work over here on this bit, and that I'm going to take my yellow and go over to that kind of mucky color, maybe a little bit more yellow. and start working. Oh gee, I match the color. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. I just wanted another version of it there. Thank you so much guys. Gina, I appreciate your, your comments there. You know, just like everybody else, we're all beginners doing something. And right now, working with gouache, I'm actually a beginner. I've only been doing actual gouache painting for a couple weeks. So, you know, I have to remember to cut myself some slack. 
and say, you know, it doesn't always have to be perfect. We didn't, we don't expect somebody to go and play the piano and play concertos on the piano at uh, Carnegie Hall the first time they sit down and they don't even know their scales yet. So remember, cut yourself some slack. Enjoy being a beginner because this is one of the most fun times in an art process is being a beginner. I'm going to go and grab some of that. It's brighter. See, I'm taking a lighter color over the top of a darker color. Oh, <laughs> I hadn't looked up at the reference. <laughs> he's, he's actually starting to come in, isn't he? He's not looking too bad. I am happy. And I hope that you're happy with your art when you do yours. When you do your painting, please share with me. You can join our Facebook group. You can share on my uh, Facebook page. You can tag at Deliberately Creative on all the places. You can share your artwork on Pinterest. You can tag me at Deliberately Creative on Pinterest. And there's times here when I am just sort of letting the brush dry out a bit and I'm using the splayed out bristles to give me texture. So much more yellow up here on the very tip, top of the shoulder, and then a little tiny touch here and there. Not much, just, just little touches. This is sort of a highlight now straight yellow right on top. He's got a few little touches of straight yellow over here in his breast. There's a bit more straight yellow down here. Putting it in with dabs. Yeah, you, I totally love, I, gouache is my new favorite medium, guys. We're probably going to see a lot of gouache, although I still really like the uh, watercolor pens. So I'm not going to give those up just because I've fallen in love with gouache. So taking a little bit of that darker green color that's over here, there's a bit of a shadowy bit here. Maybe even a little more shadowy. Putting the feathers on the way they're growing around him. A little more shadowy right here. Maybe even a little bit more of that darker dark color. Just dab it in in a couple spots, keeping it with the direction the feathers are growing. Giving us some of those shadows in the feathers. Light touch. I do like the depth that you can get with gouache. You can do this painting with acrylic though. You're not, you're not frozen out. If you want to use acrylic to do this and to, I mean, you could do this painting with, with watercolor. Certainly it just, you would have to think about it differently and plan it out a little bit differently. Okay. okay, so I see there's a bit more of that dark that's going up behind his, that part of his head. He's got that, his chubby little chin 
and cheek. We've got a bit more dark. I'm going to mix it into that. I just took a little bit of black and mixed it into the that kind of greeny yellow color. Oh yeah, if you, uh, something that you might not know, if you like a video, it goes into a liked playlist. So you have a playlist. So if you look at your YouTube and you click on your name and click on playlists, go to liked, and it will show you all of your liked playlists. You can save things separately into other kinds of playlists. So you can give a playlist a name and save the videos that you want in a certain playlist on YouTube. Yeah, it's it's not taking much to do that yellow. It is a very, it, it, it's a nice strong color. Just working some of those shadowy bits back in because you know, we can. Under his chin here, it's a little bit shadowy, not much. Now it's now it's coming down to those those kind of little details. There's the detail of his beak that I still need to do. There's still a little bit of detail on the wing. But you know, at any point, I mean this is a this is a pretty painting, so I can I think I can shift him up, up and over just a little bit now. Well, if I make him too, no, well, maybe that. There. So I could shift him up and over out of the way just a little bit. You can see more of the painting. I'll just keep dancing this back and forth. So this part right here needs to be darker. And a little bit of orange in that maybe. So I want to warm up that dark. Thanks, Jan. Yeah, I, I can't sit still and just do one type of painting or art. So I'm putting some of this dark in. Now I'm just stroking it in because what I'm going to do, rinse my brush out, just have clean water on it. And I am going to just mush that color in there. So it blends a bit with the tail because that's really the tail back there and blend it into the shadows. And maybe, maybe even a little touch of violet into that shadow. Not that much. Ah, there we go. You know, yellow and purple is the, the color opposite of yellow. So it will actually shadow that yellow. Need to always remember that. So look at that a little bit of purple. And it's more lively than black. I need, I know I still had a little bit of that purple on my brush, but I just picked up pink though. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's right. I picked up pink. That's okay. White. There's some white bits. Here in his wing, I don't have enough water on my white. There we go. If the, if the paint doesn't come off your brush, you don't have enough wa water on your brush. Well, it makes me happy to be able to share things with you guys and, you know, help people learn new techniques, new, new projects to do. But the thing is, is that I'm learning at the same time. I'm going in, oh my gosh, 
it looks really cool. Um, I'm going in and I'm learning at the same time because I find that teaching others is one of the best ways for me to learn. I want to draw through that just a little bit. But yeah, teaching others is the best way for me to learn. You understand why I use the same colors on the palette now? Yeah, because I can mix my colors and I learn how these colors work. Just because you have 24 colors or 32 colors, it um, it's not necessary to use those colors. See, I'm going to just drop some of that creamy white down on his toes. Make those pop up a little bit. Just like that, you know. As I just go, just like that. <laughs> Let's see. That's not really bright enough for that top part. So come over here, grab a little more white with that, that touch of yellow to it. Get him a little bit of that highlight going up here into the fuzz. Just a little bit. It's going to um, it's going to dry. It's going to not be as prominent. But boy, oh boy, these colors are something special. All right, I am going to take a bit of that violet. I'm going to mix it right into that green. How many times has this changed colors, guys? I'm going to take a little bit. Because if you look at his beak, his beak is not black. I'm going to take a little bit of that. Go back in and sharpen up the edge of his beak and the under. Comes back. And I'm going to come in just above that space right there. Give him his little nostril -y bit. Come back a little farther. Take a look at his eye. I'm going to round up his little eye a little bit. I'm going to Okay, quickly. I'm just quickly dabbing up the water that I just splashed on my, my little guy. Oh, there's a piece of hair. There, got it. Ha ha. Tip of a brush. Surgery. See, the nice thing about having that undercolor there, I can move this back around. Just becomes part of the texture of the painting. So guys, I do keep a color wheel. I refer to this one I'm when I'm working. I have it in front of me so I can look across at it. Tricks. Do the tricks you need to do to make it so that you can do the paintings you want to do. Yeah, much less water than you would use for a watercolor painting. Look at that. I mean, I could stop right here. I want to do just a little bit more darking, darking? How about darkening? Down here. Just firm up a couple little lines in these back wing, the, the bottom part of his regular wing here, back wing. His tail is down here. 
And it's just sort of blurred out. You don't really see his tail. I mean, you see it, but his wing just blends right into the tail. Let's see, you know, light over dark, dark over light. You just keep playing with it until it's where you want it. Oh, I see. I kind of brought that down, didn't I? Boom, boom, boom. Guess what? I'm going to change it. I'm going to change him just a little bit. He just got an extra layer of wings, extra layer of feathers on his wing. <laughs> See, you can do things. That little back and forth, you can do that. Don't like the way that, that it's going? You can soften something up. You can... Don't splash your painting. <laughs> then you'll really soften things up. But truthfully, this is so much fun. I'm going to take a bit of white into some of that, that grayed out color that we did, that brown tone. Give us that dull shine on the top of his beak. Looking at that, kind of comes out to a line and then it gets whiter as it's coming back. This would definitely be like a little fun to make a ducky with this type of tone. Almost a ducky yellow. Okay, I think I need to darken that up underneath of the top of that beak now. There we go. Darken it up a little bit. Yep, I, and I do start going a little bit quieter. I start focusing in. I went to see touch of that orange again with that yellow a little bit more just to go into my shadow maybe a little touch right here a little touch over his eye just to get it was a little flat right there I wanted a little bit more a little more texture doesn't have to be a lot and I can go back in with the yellow over the top of it Say, nope, I don't want it to be quite so prominent. Got it a little too orange. He's not an orange bird. He is a yellow bird. And now we'll take the light color into his eye. And I think we're, we're getting pretty close. Maybe a little bit more shadow underneath and the light in the eye. So the light in his eye is not an absolutely perfect white. It's close. I mean, it's reflecting light around him, so it's not perfectly white. So, and his light actually goes sort of in a arc on the top half of his little eyeball. Okay, and now we're going to go and get just a little bit of some shadow working up under here. The way the feathers grow, it wouldn't work to go back and forth because it would look funny and your eyes would go, what is wrong with that little bird? But if you make the feathers 
make your strokes go the direction that the feathers would go. You can get a much more, um, more of that feel of, okay, he's a round little bird. He's got a chubby tummy. All right, guys. Woo! Let's get the, uh, we'll turn off the, the reference now. And we are going to rinse that brush. I appreciate, whoops, I've got paint in my brush. Now, when you're using regular gouache, you can get it out of your brush even if your brush dries. If you're using acrylic gouache, it's just like acrylic paint. And if you're not careful, you can make your brushes into sticks. So I'm gonna push those out of the way. I am going to take a little bit of that dark color, I think. And down here in the bottom corner where it's a little dark already, put my little signature bit here. All the little fluffy bits, yes. So now we're gonna take this tape off. This was just washi tape. I got it, I just got this pack. It was like a package of 60 of this narrow washi tape. Look at that, all those colors. for like $9. Okay. Let's see, let's just put a clean white background behind him. All right, what do you guys think? Did we do okay? I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the question and answer, uh, questions about gouache what to do with gouache, how to use gouache, how is gouache different from watercolor and acrylic, and what is acrylic gouache, and all the other questions that I could think of. I hope that they helped you. I hope you enjoyed this little painting and that you will try it out yourself. Remember that all of the description information below has where to find all the materials, how to support my channel, and how to get a hold of me because, you know, maybe you want to get a hold of me. <laughs> Remember, guys, to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And that means wash your hands. <laughs> I know you guys are doing it. Make sure other people around you are washing their hands, too. Don't drink paint water. Bye-bye, guys.